It's Two Jerks and Some Guests, a comedic look at the news you never knew existed, with your hosts, Josh and Jason. This ought to be fucking good. Uh, hey, guys. Oh, nice burp. <laughs> so we already started recording? Yeah. yeah I guess we're leaving that in. Yeah, we're leaving that one in, because that was awesome. Uh, so, what's happening, guys? Uh... Just it's me and Jason. Yeah, just us right now. So we're back. We had a little hiatus. We updated some things. Jason had to work in a different city for a while. Yeah, I was. I've been stuck out of town in shithole Gainesville for a while. So yeah, but so we're back with it. We're going to be back to weekly stuff now. Yep. So and just we're here now, and uh, so Jason. How's the last two, three weeks been? Uh, it's been pretty crazy, I guess. Just been working um, <clears throat> in the Gainesville location for a while. Uh, but like you said, I'll be going back to Ocala. Nice. Uh, we had Black Friday, so if anybody's ever worked in any kind of business on Black Friday, you know that's just total hell. Yep. Even for lo- small business like us, it's still crazy busy. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, it's, it, that's one of those things where you prescribe a some kind of psycho <laughs> something before oh you do god. it. Oh my god! Yeah, and that was that was the day I didn't sleep for like two days or something. It was like two days I stayed up because I had to work at midnight, and I, I don't sleep midday. That and we also got all of us got Red Dead at that time. Yeah, so oh yeah. we didn't sleep a lot that's because true. that game's amazing. Yeah, and I have a 5-month-old, so that's a and and I a, don't have a 5-month-old. And other old. children. I got like 40 kids, so I don't really sleep that much anyway. <coughs> Red Dead so, is online now though, so if you haven't played it, you should go online, which I will be doing tomorrow. Definitely. We do want to bring up real quick before we get started with everything, we are doing our uh layaway payoff um Oh yeah, thing. our Christmas payoff. Our yeah. Christmas payoff. Um all funds, all proceeds from it are going to be going to paying off layaway for families. Um, we're going to make sure that the layaways have toys. We're not going to be paying off somebody's big screen TV. Sorry for anybody that's here in Ocala and wants to go put a big screen TV <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. On thing. Yeah, but I mean, you may have a TV on there, but if you also have, like, a ton of toys... We'll pay off the toys. We're going to pay off your toys. Yeah, yeah. we want to make sure your, your kids are having a yeah. good holiday. And just going to pass on this, you know, we're just going to try and do something good for everybody. Let kids have a great uh, Christmas. We are jerks, but we're not jerks to children. That's true. And you can uh, you can find a link to that on our Facebook if you and just go to geek.culture. I don't know if you have a, a direct, if you know the direct yeah, I'll, link. Yeah, uh, I'll um, direct link it at the, in the uh, description right. of this video. Yep, and if it's still, you can just, like I said, go to our Facebook at geek.culture and... Uh, I think it's been up for about a week, and we're almost to about a hundred dollars. We want to try and reach five thousand before right. um, before Christmas. Yeah, uh, shouldn't be a big deal if everybody gets on there and shares it, puts a dollar or two on there. Yeah, you put two dollars on there, and a hundred people do it. It's two hundred bucks, and we're and, just trying yeah. to help people that don't have as much as we do. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna do as many of them as we can. If we get only five hundred dollars, we're gonna we're gonna spread that five hundred dollars as much as we can. Right. Um, I'm gonna donate. Probably one of the last days. Try and put a bunch of money in there. Um, Jason will try and do what he can. All of our guests will try and do what they can. Um, but yeah, please go on there and try and do that. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll record some other uh, some of our purchases so you can see some of the good stuff that you're doing. And if you do a significant thing, I'm going to tag you in the video um, that we do. Put you in there. Put yeah. your description, your name. <clears throat> yeah, in there we'll something. give you a shout out if yeah, people definitely. ask to, who helped them. We'll let you. We'll let them know that you are a contributor. And, and if you do really big, we might just have you on the show. Yeah, we'll just put you on the show. But even still, even if you only do a dollar or two, it's totally fine. You mm-hmm. know, we'll we will definitely mention all the people that uh, yeah. that donate. It's that it's almost incentivized that if you donate more, then you obviously get more. Uh, but then you're also being a decent human being. Uh, in a time of year that you should be. I mean, you should always be a good human being, but if you're a piece of shit during Christmas time, then... Uh, there's just, a, there's just, a certain place in hell for yeah, it. Yeah, just throw yourself off a fucking bridge. Like, exactly. Just, <laughs> just get it, just get it out of the way. That's why we're jerks, because we right. tell you to kill yourself. Yeah, kill yourself if you're not a good person, and uh, especially this time of year. Why wouldn't you want to help people? Especially if you have a disposable income. Just, I mean, what's yep. $5? Exactly. Um, so, 
going forward, I, I wanted to tell you, um, hospitals fucking suck. Oh. So, the last last three or four days, anybody that knows me knows that I've been dealing with grandparents recently. I'm 30 years old, and I have not... I Five months ago, lost my first grandparent. Which I, is crazy. Yeah. My, my All my grandparents are in um, their late 80s, early 90s, and I just lost my first one not five months ago. Yep. So... Now we're starting to get these where we're at the hospital once a week. Yeah. Kind of thing. No, with your grandfather, right? Yeah. And yeah. my grandfather, I didn't know this was possible with all these osteo nonsense. He was walking around, broke eight bones in his back. Can you, like, I, I can't even imagine having one broken bone in my back. Yeah. I pull muscle. I have a pulled muscle on my back that that, that I get every so often, and that's like horrible. Mm-hmm. Like I lay in a ball, and I'm like, I talk like this because I just feel it just ripping. I couldn't imagine being an 80 plus year old human being and breaking that many bones in your body. Oh yeah, and and <coughs> so we've we've been talking about it, and I was looking at the bill at the hospital, and like they crack open aspirin. And because aspirin's sealed, they can't just send it down to the pharmacy. Right. You buy the whole bottle, and a whole bottle of aspirin and a hospital's like two hundred dollars. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna see Jason's side on this healthcare thing for a little bit. Yeah. And be like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, we uh, everybody should have healthcare. Some you- some form of healthcare. I think the health share plan is the is the way that this country's got ahead because yeah. that's that's the model that's working. Right. Um, everybody pays a share. That's what insurance should be. Right. Um, and I, I love it. It's it, And it's only these Christian companies that are doing it, which is weird. You can... These companies could pop up for nothing if everybody makes their share. Right. And everybody would have health care and we wouldn't have this discussion if the government needed to provide it or not. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, so I just... It, these hospital situations... I just want to tell you a story, though, about the hospital. So I'm at the hospital, and my grandfather's in a shared room, which it always sucks. Because you get the talker. <laughs> yeah. And and, and and you're never that one. I'm never the talker. <laughs> uh, I may sound like a talker on here. But <laughs> we I, have a podcast where I we talk. A, yeah, but, I have a podcast yeah. where I talk. But... I'm not a talker in real life, especially if I don't know you. I'm not. I'm not the kind of person that'll walk up and, "Hey, man, how you doing?" I got one of those in my grandfather's room, and he's just sitting there, sitting there talking to me, talking to me, talking to me. And he goes, "Well, let me get your phone number." He find out he's a carpenter, and he's find out that I'm doing stuff to uh, my parents' house because we live right in Hurricane Central. Yes. So we're talking about doing hurricane shutters and stuff like that on my parents' house. And he goes, "Well, let me get your number, and I can help you out with the hurricane shutters." <sighs> yeah. So I give this dude a fake phone number. Oh no. And he goes, Well let me call it and he sees my phone in my hand. And I go, Oh no 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 uh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna say to this guy. <laughs> you know, yeah, I did the don't, don't And he's like in his sixties, so I, whatever I say is not gonna not gonna happen. Yeah. And he just He's doesn't. doing it. He calls the number and I go, Oh my phone's dead. Perfect timing from my brother calls me. And my phone, if you've ever heard my phone, it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme. Oh, it's pretty distinct. And it's loud because I'm hard of hearing. And he goes, oh, so you got my phone call. And I go, yes. And I block my, I red call my my brother. Yeah. And he's like, good, 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 good. He goes, I'll give you a call later. And I'm like, oh, God, if we don't check out today, I'm going to have this dude calling me forever. Yeah. So I'm down at the nurse's station the whole time. So, uh, you, you know, the guy in uh, 343, <laughs> he can leave early, right? Yeah. Uh, um, no. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. We, we uh, could get him out of here. Yeah. But, yeah, so I had I had to deal with a talker for two days, uh, seven <laughs> hours each day in the hospital with my grandfather. Jesus. So that was not not fun at all. Yeah, hospitals are definitely interesting places. But, um, so, uh, anything going on with your life? No, uh, not really. I, I am a parent who has a full-time job, so 
life isn't really something that I have right now. Yeah, my and children... Christmas is coming up, so you're, you like, um, every chance you get getting those little toys and yeah. stuff. I always, whenever I come over to your house, you got them on your kitchen counter and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I had to, um, I went and bought a carpet the other day, so, because uh, I have tile floor, which I hate. I hate tile floor. And, um, so I bought this really big carpet for our front, uh, for the living room, mm-hmm. because Scarlet's starting to crawl, mm-hmm. and she needs something to grip. But she yeah. can't really grip the tile, plus... Her head gets tired, or her neck gets tired, yeah, so she face plants. A face plant, a tile. A tile is good not thing. good. Um, so we got the carpet, and it's it's got her a lot more padding. Plus, it gives her something to grip. So she's starting to she's starting to move around a lot. But you're right. When I went and did the carpet, I was at Ollie's. And if you've never been to Ollie's, you definitely should go. It's fucking phenomenal. It's uh, Ollie's and for anybody that's not in where you have one. It's it's a uh, it's a wholesale store. They right. it, they buy. Um, excess from other stores, right? And they sell it to you at wholesale prices. Yeah, sell it to you for nothing. So, like with the Magic uh, board game that I bought from Walmart for twenty dollars, they got it a year later for five. Yeah, you. They had like a hundred of them. Um, they sell like with Ross and TJ Maxx and all that stuff. They get like all the excess, like he said, or they get last year's model, whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, and uh, and they sell it for nothing. So when I was there, I bought. Bella some Play-Doh because it had Dory Play-Doh and uh, and so I bought that and then my son's uh, got this amazing, uh, it's like a, the sharper image a T-Rex like a remote control T-Rex, oh, the white one Nice. you know what I mean, it yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. the white robot it's the got shit all... that we wish we would have had when we were kids, yeah, it's the one that's got like all the little ridges in it, it looks it looks like, in, like, like, like the a... Indominus from yeah, Dress yeah, exactly, World. exactly, and uh, and it that was like nothing. I can't remember what my mother in law got it for for, but it was nothing. And so this is not by a promo way, for I... Ollie's. And if Ollie's, you want to sponsor us, by all means, yeah, um, I, I'd be down because I'll, I'll go culture. in there all day. because yeah. their candy walls amazing. Yeah, the geek culture at gmail dot com and geek dot culture and all that stuff. So support you can... <laughs> yeah. at g three three k culture dot com. Right. Yep. And then geek dot culture on our Facebook. So thank you, Ollie's. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, other than just doing that kind of stuff, getting ready for Christmas, we're, as we're recording this, it's December 1st, yeah. so Christmas is right around the corner. Yeah. Um, I do want to say, talking about presents, I did win presents with your daughter for her birthday. Oh, the poop. The I, poop I bought Play-Doh. poop Play-Doh. Oh my god, she loves poop Play-Doh. And <laughs> I was looking at the box, and I'm like, okay, so what makes this so special? And it's... It's just the old ice cream thing where they, you twirl it out and it yeah. became like the ice cream. Yeah, like thing. soft serve. Yep. Yeah, it's like soft serve. But it's shit. But they do all <laughs> the, they do all the brown colors in yeah. there. So you know the person that, at Play Doh, the one executive that was like, "Well, let's just take over this poop emoji thing and uh, yeah, get rid of this excess brown Play Doh." Yeah, we, we got, got these sixty different colors of brown. Yeah. So yeah, it came with like twelve colors and like eight of them were brown. That's, um, yeah, that's amazing. So, and then it has, like, all these little faces. She built one the other day. Um, that's but, amazing. But, yeah, and then, um, and then, I don't, I don't know if we, how long we want to discuss this, but in, it, it kind of leads into what, because we did an interview, well, Josh did an interview, yep. which we'll get into more detail in a minute, but, um, recently, uh, Stan Lee passed away, and yeah. we've been on break since it happened. It was like two weeks ago, I want to say now, yeah. which is crazy and, uh, to think it's been that long already. Yeah. But he was and 90- not, a, not a lot of not a lot of celebrity deaths hit me, and particularly kind of hard. Yeah, like you feel it kind of in your. I think the next one that'll probably do it is somebody probably like Ric Flair or somebody somebody I've watched since I was a kid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that'll probably hit me kind of hard, but Stan Lee kind of hit me a little hard. Um, he changed what comic books are. Yeah. Um, his product, especially Spider-Man, um, everybody remembers that first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie. Yeah. It definitely launched the superhero, what they, not these beat em up movies. He, he actually came in, had a story, you right. felt for the kid, and, um, he shouldn't have won the fight, and he did, right. and... It was it was a magnificent movie, and that's what they build upon now to this day with superhero movies. Oh is, yeah, is that's that's the mold, and uh, that's that's the one that they make all the movies off of. Is you just got to do what he did with that, and but 
the characters that Stanley, you got to think, Fantastic Four, Spider Man, uh, bought Captain America at a time when Captain America wasn't anything, right? And, and made him one of the biggest blockbusters of the. 2000s. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's probably one of the biggest heroes ever. Now. Oh yeah, and everybody knows who. Uh... I mean, the Shield alone is. I mean, you can walk down. We're right here in Gainesville, Florida, where University of Florida is right down the street, and you could even with all those college kids, you see at least one out of ten. You'll see a, some kind of Captain America shield or a tattoo with a the shield and the star on it uh just a huge huge um influence and in everything geek culture uh, was definitely stanley oh yeah yeah he he literally is geek culture i mean that's 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 our page obviously but uh <clears throat> he he was like the coolest nerd ever like yeah. they're never he was, he was the grandpa <laughs> everyone wanted right and, and they did um I wish I could say how many characters he created, but... I mean, just look at the first two that I... That if you look on the Wikipedia for it, mm-hmm. it's so fucking long. Yeah. Like, it's obscene how well, many people... And, and another person that doesn't get as much credit as they should is Jack Kirby, because Jack Kirby is a... Yeah. Jack, it's Jack Kirby and Stanley. It's not just Stanley. Yeah. Jack Kirby was a huge part of it, yeah. and uh, and then does not get the respect that he deserves. But with Stanley, he literally, like you said, Stanley, he championed was comic everything. Books. He championed yeah. everything we see now. He's comic books, I and mean, he's, he was the one that came up with the idea of making the X Men and making that a social commentary against racism at the time mm-hmm. in the '60s. Right. Um, he just these things that yeah. Uh, very it pushed the envelope of comic books and it made comic books something that we don't see in many forms of entertainment now uh people try to push a social commentary but they don't stay true to themselves right and you see stuff like the nfl where they try to push a social commentary and they get a ton of backlash stan did it in a way that everybody he had he had a gift and he pushed you know he was a storyteller, and he could make you feel for things that you just didn't feel before. Right. Um, just it, we were talking about our favorite cameos a few weeks ago, and definitely mine was the um, new Spider-Man game when Mary Jane and Peter Parker meet at the restaurant, and they've been broken up in the in the story. It's very early in the story. If you don't know this, spoiler alert. I'm sorry. Um, but Mary Jane stands up after Peter runs out after a police car and Stan Lee's standing there behind the short order cook and he says, I always, you two were always my favorite. Yeah. And oh, it yeah. was just like, oh, that's just, that's awesome. Right. Kind of thing. And that was my favorite <laughs> Stan Lee cameo. Yeah. He, and he's done a lot. Like, uh, he got, um, in, what was it? In 2008, he was the recipient of the National Medal of Arts, which is the, uh, the National Medal of Arts is a prestigious honor. It's the highest honor given to artists and art patrons by the United States government. And in nice. 2008, George Bush gave him that medal, and they have a picture of it, which is just so awesome to think that uh, he was honored that way. He has uh, his Hollywood uh, the walking, Walk of Fame, which he didn't get until 2011, which I think is very strange. Which is weird. Um, he's, yeah, he's done, he's just done so much. Uh, he, I mean... Um, to to the point like um, talk about a guy who could who could do anything. He wanted to at that point, and right. he you know he was not involved with he's, he he had not been involved with Marvel Comics for a long time, and well I guess he has he he always has some kind of. He, tied yeah, to it. right, but he was more of like the spokesman yeah. for the last decade. Yeah. You know, he's, he's but, a ninety-five-year-old man. But to want to to take, you know, go in and the Thor Ragnarok one where he walks up and he gives Thor a haircut and stuff like that. Yeah, 
It's just, he doesn't have to do these silly little things, and he did them because the fans wanted to see them. Right. And you, and you knew that. Yeah. And, and people, too, they have to understand that, like, that he is he was a very old man. And very. he was doing these cameos in his late 80s. In 90s. Yeah. So he was doing things that, you know what I mean? Like, if you go back and watch, like, um, like with uh, Christopher Lee, if you go watch the Hobbit uh, special features, Christopher Lee is only in a sitting position because he's physically not able to stand. He yep. couldn't even travel to do some of these cameos. And he was not as old as as Stan Lee when Stan Lee was doing what he did. Yep. And you still see, yes, maybe everything with Stan Lee was very, like, quick, so you didn't really see him move a lot, but he was always standing and moving, doing his cameos. He was yeah. super animated. I think the only one we ever saw him, like, sitting down was when he, uh, the Watchers, when, when, uh... Oh, yeah, he's just sitting there talking sitting to him. The Watchers. Right, which is so awesome. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, he is a Watcher. He, he, he is. Yeah. He's gotta be. There's, yeah. they ha I would love for them to end with him being, I mean, like, oh, yeah, Stan Lee's a Watcher. Yeah. Or, like, have the Watchers... Uh, and I think we've got four more cameos, they said, that they've already got I know filmed. they filmed a bunch of his stuff already. Yeah, he's he's definitely in Spider-Man. Um, definitely in Infinity War, too. Yeah. But I don't know what else he would be in. Um, maybe... Maybe... Um, maybe the new Ant-Man or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but anybody you ever talk to about Stan Lee has nothing but good things to say about him. Um, and he's one of those guys that never said even, no to a fan. Well, even he's one of those guys that even after his death, which is still a very short time from now uh, when it happened, uh, you're just not hearing scandal. You no. just don't. His name is one of those names that even Joe Pa, like Joe Pa, was like football's grandfather. Yeah. College football's grandfather was Joe Pa. Yeah. And after that scandal, they tore his statue down, they, they got took rid of him his off. record. Like, he literally... Remember, they took him off the painting um, in downtown. Yeah. That big mural. They gave him the Chris Benoit treatment where he does not exist anymore, which is a terrible travesty. And I, what I will say that uh, I did read a thing recently where they... or No, I watched the E60 thing on that. Yeah. And it had been something like, I forget how many years, how much time had passed. It's been a little while, yeah. Um, they finally put him back on the mural and put a halo on him. Well, good. And I thought that's a good that's a good way to start it, but that dude's statue needs to be back up. Yeah, it was a whole terrible thing, and, 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 and you can say what you want about it. He was him, in a but... terrible position, and right. I wouldn't want to be in his position with that. I didn't, yeah. I, I can't. There's no right way to respond in that situation. Well, there there definitely is. I right, mean, I right, have right. I would have probably done it a little differently than him, but yeah. he came from a different age. Yeah. I mean, you got to... You, I, I can't say discount, but you got to understand. Yeah. And, no, age, and none of us are saying that any... We're, and we're definitely not saying no, that what Sandusky. he did was... Oh, yeah, Sandusky was an awful piece of shit. He can die. If he sat right here in front of me, I'd shoot him with the gun in my pocket. <laughs> and it's, we live in Florida, so... Uh, Stand your ground. All he has to say is that he was within a few... He was he felt threatened. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, but... But, yeah, so... But Stan Lee is one of those guys you just never heard bad things about from anyone. Yeah, and, and uh, no scandal. Um, him and his wife did such great things for people. Yep. When his wife passed, I said it was going to be a year, and it and it wasn't even a year. Yeah, I think I, I don't even think it was uh, a I year. don't know. I don't know when his wife died. Yeah, uh, and it was it was very soon after that that he passed. It's it's very true, and when you are with somebody for a very long time, mm -hmm. and they pass, you don't have long to live. Yeah, that's generally kind of what it is. Yeah. So, um, we're gonna um take a short break, but our break's gonna be we're gonna play. Some of the heirs of Azildor, um, uh, they have a an accompanying metal album. Oh yeah, let's comic. let's actually talk about that really okay. quick, so yeah. we can know what we're going into. So um, <clears throat> there is a uh, local it, artist, and do they do? It's an independently released comic book, right? Um, out of Alterna Comics, um, and they. Uh, oh. It's a very cool theme because this was initially supposed to be an ebook with an accompanying metal album. Uh, not death metal, but just metal music yeah. album. 
and every issue has a song that you're supposed to play while you're reading it kind of thing or has an area where you're supposed to play it kind of thing and it's if you haven't read it and you like steampunk you will love this book um it's available on their website heirsofazildor.com follow them on social media which i will link in the description below right um follow those guys Super cool guys. Minimum staff, so they did all the work themselves. Their artist, he wasn't able to be a part of the interview, but um, just Nulls and all of them. They're just they, Stephanie. They they were awesome to have an interview with, and just want you guys to take a listen real quick. Um, here's one of their songs going into the interview and then and then well, we'll so you want to do we'll do the song and then we'll just jump right to the interview jump and right then into we'll the interview be, and then, then we'll be right back after that interview yep yeah, and I'll, um he did have me he wanted me to play one song at the end so we'll play that exact song and then i will be right back with us here so see you in a minute Alright guys, welcome back to Two Jerks and Some Guests. Jason is not with me here during the second segment, but I did bring in Mike to help me interview our guest for this segment. Uh, we've got the creators of Heirs of Isildur, which is a great, great comic book. Uh, their eighth book is coming out, or it's coming out this week, correct? Yep, tomorrow is the official release date. Tomorrow is the official release date. Um, they, it's just an awesome, uh, piece of thing, but it, everybody knows Mike, he's the comic book guy that we have. I'm the better version of Jason, it's totally okay. Uh, we, we, we can say that. We can point. say that. I'll give you that. Jason, you're a bum. That's it. Slacker. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the comic book guy as opposed to the comic book man. Well, yeah, I yeah. can't, the copyright reasons, I can't be the comic book man. Yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. get sued under the table for that. Exactly. But, um, so... I just want to get into this. Our two guests here today are Matt and Stephanie. Um, you guys, this book is awesome. I read number one. I haven't gotten past number one yet, doing a lot of work and growing the channel and stuff like that, but number one did get me hooked. So I am going to be reading going forward. Um, let's just get right into it. So give me, tell me, somebody that hasn't read Heirs of Isildur. Why would they like it? Okay, so the first thing I would say is the, the one tagline we have for Heirs of Isildur is we're steampunk comics of metal collide. There are three equal parts to it. You've got uh, the steampunk element, uh, which is the, the overarching um, graphics, uh, the feel. Um, there is, obviously, it's presented in a comic form, but then there's also a metal soundtrack to it as well. Mm -hmm. And the way that the soundtrack is designed, it's designed so that you don't need one to appreciate the other but if you put them both together you get a fully developed um universe exactly. um the storyline is um the storyline unveils itself like a vertical line in the comics mm -hmm. and the songs intersect at horizontal points to bring about some better character origin stories uh it even says in the comic if you want to know more about this character go listen to this song um We've been able to do some fun things with that as well as the story has gone on. There's mm -hmm. one section later on where you get to see two different perspectives on the same story. One from the character's perspective, one from like a third party bird's eye view. And the story is kind of told a little bit differently. Gotcha. So the reader actually has a little bit better perspective than the characters themselves. Mm -hmm. So that, we've had a lot of fun with that. That's awesome. I love the whole accompanying metal album with it. I, I Like I told you before the interview, I am not a metal fan i i grew up country bluegrass country rock and roll that sort of stuff as mike would say terrible music Pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
movie. But I listen to it, and it's not. It's not that. I can understand what you what what the music is saying, and I I enjoyed it immensely. It was very good. I, it fit with Heirs of Isildur. It was awesome. Um, so what what drew you to the fact you're going to do an album with a com- with a comic book kind of thing? So that's actually a really good question. It was it actually started the other way around. My whole background is on the music side. I was in a band for many years that toiled in the underground and had some smaller record deals. One of our deals is with the label out of Holland. We did one European tour. Very cool. And um, I just got tired of toiling in the scene. Um, as you see on the, the back of the pamphlet, there's a, a, a comment from Sean Tibbetts, mm-hmm. who was the bass player at Camelot. The man's out there touring all over the world. He was actually in my band back then. We went from being in, in this band together to him joining Camelot and touring all over the world. That's cool. And um, I just got really tired of the the BS and the drama and all that in that scene and I just removed myself from it completely at the time and um, about seven, eight years later I was like I knew I needed to get back into writing mm-hmm. and so I'm like you know I'm gonna just start writing some new music. I started from square one um, didn't have an intention of having this big grand thing just started writing a couple of songs and I wanted to have a little bit of a backstory to it um, Corey Steger, who was the original guitar player from Under Oath, was my musical partner in it. Mm-hmm. And originally, we were going to write the story to have two characters that kind of resemble the two of us, as far as you know, being like a, you know, um, just like a detective pair, or whatever. It yeah, may yeah, be. yeah, yeah. That was just kind of our thought. Um, but as time kind of rolled on, Corey said, "Look, I don't want you to write me in. This is your project. I don't want anybody to get confused about that. It's a partnership here. This is your thing. I want you to run with it. I'm still going to play on it." But I don't want to take any of that away from you, so you just keep writing it. And um, it kind of evolved and wrote a little bit more music here. The story grew a little bit there. The next thing you know, I'm working simultaneously on this album and on the story arc. And and I will say that anybody that sits down and says, hey, you know what? I want to write an album and do a comic series at the same time. You should get slapped in the face because (laughs) that's way too big of an undertaking to start off from scratch and just be like, let's try and do these two things at once. Yeah. I, I I know a little bit on the writing side of it. I've written some, you know, RPG stuff and going forward with that and 20 and 30 pages. And that's it. And it took all of my time for <laughs> weeks on end. And it's just, it's, it's mind-blowing to think that you, you know, sat down and, you know, performed your music, performed this, then go and do this and all that stuff. That's just, oh, more power to you, man. So, Stephanie, yeah. I asked you real quick when about eight, the eighth book. You said you were bringing in Mike, and you were the first person to say. I said there has to be one word for Mike, and you got you nailed it on the head before anybody well, else. It's, it's funny because that's actually Matt. Matt was the one that told me because I've met Mike a couple times, mm-hmm. but Matt was like, "We need to change this dialogue a little bit because there's kind of like a catchphrase, and if we say it, then anybody that." Had even questions whether it's Mike or not is going to read that and be like, but it's just funny because we came in on Black Friday, which actually was, I guess, the tail end of Black Friday. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and I was like, I heard him say it. I heard him say boss. <laughs> so anybody that's anybody that's listening, if you haven't gotten a, a the eighth book yet, if you read it, I know I got a couple listeners that have that do read it. I want to get it out to you guys more. Mike, the store owner that we record everything in. He is in the book, and if you've ever met Mike, he says one word. It's a phrase. It's like a catchphrase. It's like yeah, my, but that it's word. My tagline. Really <laughs> it, well, that one word is like that's your Pikachu for being Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If I, if, I, if, I, if I were a Pokemon, I'd be the boss man Pokemon. That's, yeah, that's perfect. And so Mike does say boss quite often. Yeah. Um, so, what going forward can we expect? Past issue eight. What's some? If you could give me one hint going forward, I've only read issue one. Give me a little something to get me hooked on going forward. Okay, um, I can take that one, and you can build on it however you want to do it. So I absolutely will. So go on, fan. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because I started off, and one of the things you were asking about is, you know, what can we say to get mm. fans drawn in? And mm. the first thing that I ever said to Matt, and at that time we had only. 
I think issue three was in production. In production. So I had read one and two. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I said to him was, this is super unique mm-hmm. because there's nothing else that I know of as a comic nerd yeah. that I have been for years and years. And I've never seen anything like this at all. Yeah. So that's what drew me in in the beginning. And now it's kind of funny because I'm part of the team. Exactly. But there are times when I know, I know just enough. But I don't know everything, there you go. and we, that's an agreement between Matt and I. We we like it that way. We mm-hmm. want to keep it that way because there's kind of this this balance between still being a fan but also being on the team and mm-hmm. needing to have my input. Yeah. So what I can say for what I know of is that Matt has a plan for everything, that's and awesome. so everything is purposeful, and I can confirm that you will be reading things and you will say, "I need to go back and read." issue one or two again because okay. now that makes sense there is this little thing that was put mm. in and maybe right. it didn't catch me right away or maybe i looked over it and now crap you know it's it's it was all building towards this final result yeah so um it's gonna be uh, there's i would say there's waves mm. of just when you think that you're lulled into a false sense of security then the rug gets pulled out from under yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that, the, all the best stories are the ones that you can go back and you see these things that have been building up for time, and you've just been building in the in the in the forefront, and it just comes to comes to light immediately. Hmm. So, Mike, you have read more comic books than probably anybody I've ever met in my life. Sure. Where does where does <laughs> of Isildur stand for you? Well, the thing is, you can't really. It's unique, and that's the first, the first and most important thing to remember here is we're looking at something that's coming from the ground up, and and it's and, it, and the way it's presented is not like anything that I've read mm-hmm. to this point. You know, I've been you know, I grew up a Marvel DC guy, and, and as I've grown older, I've gotten more into the independent line, which this would definitely fall more into what the independent comics do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a great read that is it's something that is going to provide really if you give it a chance, everybody's going to get something different out of the book. And that's really, you know, you know, you look at it and you're like, okay, it's a steampunk book. Maybe I'm not big into steampunk or whatever like that. And maybe you're not. But, you know, if you pop it open and you read it, you're like, well, yeah, this character's got some some depth. You know, maybe I maybe I want to learn a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's the beauty of it is that the fact that it's a book that is clearly designed for the steampunk fan. And, and it's in its most base. You know, you want those guys to love it. But then if you get other people in it, like a gentleman who was in here earlier we were talking with, he's a steampunk guy, but he's not really a comic guy. And he's read the first issue, he's like, yeah, now I want more. Mm. Because it's a good, deep story. And that's yeah. really what, that's what you want, and that's what I want, at least now as an adult, out of my comic books. Don't get me wrong, still love my Iron Man, still love my Spider-Man, all that stuff, I always will. But there's something about a story that it can pull you back every, you know, every single issue. You're like, oh, okay, cool. And then you're saying these little tidbits that you're going to go back and look at. I can kind of see some of that stuff that I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Now that I've heard that, I'm gonna, I know, I know kind of where we're going to look. So, you know, I, it's, it's definitely it's unique. It's an awesome read uh, that definitely touches on people's fandoms outside of the obvious forefronted one, which is great. Yeah. That's the best way to be. So, um not often do you get to meet somebody that has created from the ground up their own book, like Mike said. What was what do you think was the biggest hurdle going forward with this book? I would say that there's probably been two hurdles. One is understanding understanding what your niche is mm-hmm. because there's a lot of different definitions of the word success and, and that's one of the things I learned from the musical side of things where growing up it was like, oh, I got to, you know, get on a label. I got to get signed and I got to tour. And they don't realize that the vast majority of bands that are touring don't make a whole lot of money. They get themselves in debt. They become slaves to the record labels. Mm-hmm. And even though they're out there looking like they're having fun, and I'm not saying that there's not fun in that. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of financial sense that's being made on the backside. So for me, the first thing was, where is my niche in this market? And how can I, how can I appeal without pandering to that market? Mm-hmm. So figuring out the way to do that. And then the other thing was simply, how am I going to put this thing together in a way that, like Mike said, you know, he loves his Iron Man, he loves his Spider-Man, that's going to be something that somebody that's into those things may actually want to pick up. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not going to be like, well, I'm just going to pick it up because I know that guy. It's going to be like, yeah. I'm going to pick it up because I really enjoy that yeah. story. And uh, as you can see from the progression from one through eight, the first few issues are more of an illustrated novel because mm-hmm. it came from being written as an ebook. But as it's gone on and we've 
you know, Stephanie's been involved and the, the new artist, Javi Lapar, has been involved. Um, it has lent itself to be being presented in a much more um, traditional comic format. Mm -hmm. um, one of the nice things about that is um, we've been in discussions with a, uh, a couple of different companies about doing the trade version when this 11 issue story arc is done. And we've already made the decision that when that trade version happens, I'm going to go back and relay out the original issues just so that that way they all, all the 11 issues look like they should be in the same trade volume. Yeah. You should, you know, you shouldn't look at a trade volume and be like, well, I can see the progression here. You want them to be able to see, Hey, this is the final form of issue 11. Mm. It's the same thing as issue one. And then that way, um, someone who has been a fan since issue one can say, Hey, you know what? There's a value for me to actually go out and get the trade as yeah. well. They can say, Hey, I've got these, these original issues that are going to be collector's items. Now that's a, that's I can get the trade. I can see, I can see maybe there's a little bit of things I may have missed because of it being pictures beside text in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, there may be some unique content that we may add in after the fact. There's a couple of panels that we already know just don't exist in the original ones that we need to actually have drawn in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have fun making the story new again yeah. when that time happens. So that's good. That, that's definitely something to look forward to. Um, what uh, so going forward? What is your schedule right now? For uh, do you guys have a schedule going forward for books going forward? Absolutely. Uh, and can they find that on your social media, or do you guys have it uh, available for us? Uh, there's a. It's not on the social media site, but mm -hmm. there is a schedule. Um, we actually have um, an an umbrella name for the company that Stephanie have. It's called Insymmetry Creations, and the okay. reason why we use Insymmetry Creations as a title is because not only do we work on Heirs of a Sealer together, we also have a couple of other titles. Stephanie has a graphic novel called Bandera that's going to come out nice. um, probably later in the year. Um, we also have a title Hex that's going to come out on Alterna Comics. Okay. It's going to come out at the beginning of 2020. Um, so we have a lot of different things. We have a side story. Uh, for heirs that's going to come out of the end of this story arc between this story and the sequel story to this. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to have a schedule because we have to know, especially for our artist, so he doesn't want to kill us. <laughs> which, or we which, kill him. Yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> we thing, don't want to kill him. Which thing yeah. is going to be worked on at which time. Mm -hmm. So the schedule for heirs is that we know that issue nine is supposed to drop um, beginning of February, but believe it's going to probably drop... Um, end of January at Renegar Steampunk Fest okay. in Mount Dora. Awesome. Then we want to have another lyric video and issue 10 come out um, at the beginning of April. Mm -hmm. The final story arc, final issue for this story arc is supposed to drop during con season end of June next year. Um, then after that, we want to start hitting on the side story that's going to drop between this story arc and the next. And then... Hexed is going to drop, I think, January of 2020. Is February of 2020, oh, 2020 is when 2020. issue one comes out. It'll be awesome. a three-issue miniseries with Alterna. Awesome. That's cool. I always love the miniseries. The miniseries seem to, like, anytime I, because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, and they, they drop a little two-issue two miniseries of, you know, Gwen Stacy doing this or something like that. It's always one of those hooks that you got to pick up because they're awesome. Um, so, Bandera, what's, that's... You got a little smile on your face when you said that. <laughs> so what what is that all about? Well, what I can say about it is it's a post-apocalyptic Western story. It was actually that's the first script that I ever wrote. That's awesome. And um, I started off big. I did a graphic novel first, which now I tell people, if you're going to get into comics, maybe start off smaller. And that, I've, I've had a couple of uh, one-page and two-page comics. In fact, Hex that we're doing with Alterna started off as a two-page okay. comic that actually got picked up with Alterna as it came out on a Wednesday. Nice. The first issue that they did. And um, from there, they just decided to pick it up and um they didn't just pick it up well, they requested hey yeah. i really would like to see this turn into a mini series yeah, i was yeah. on a video on a video call where the president of alterna said directly to her, i'd love to see this turn as a mini series and she was like, like she hung up she's like dude twist my arm i'll do it. she's like dude we need to write this <laughs> but right we're now do it together. That's awesome. so um but yeah it's you know it's um it'll it'll, it'll be a a fun and um interesting title when it comes out awesome that's what i can say about it so um going forward you guys social media it's uh heirs of azildor h-e-i-r-s of azildor i-s-i-l-d-u-r that's on facebook uh facebook instagram, instagram and, twitter. and twitter uh the website is heirs of azildor.com uh, be sure you can get all the music at itunes spotify youtube amazon music um 
all those good places. Um, be sure to check out their YouTube channel because I went and looked up some of their lyric videos and it was amazing. Um, the the album is awesome. I'm gonna Thank you, sir. we're gonna go forward from right here. I'm gonna let you guys listen to. I think you guys gave me permission to. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're gonna play probably the whole of Crossroads going forward uh, from right here. Let you guys listen to that. And thank you guys for being a part of this. Um, we loved having you. Well, everything that I just told you, we'll have linked in the description. Go subscribe to those guys. Go follow their Facebook page. Everything else, it's an awesome read. Check out Mike, um, Bearded Brown Coat Comics. and yeah. I would say as well, also, if you want to know more about what's happening with Hext and with... Uh, with Bandera, also we have some other one pages. It's Stephanie's specialty is the one page comic, mm-hmm. and that's actually how we met. Was she did a one pager uh, called Boot Hill, okay. and I was completely blown away. And the artist on Boot Hill is the artist that's now the artist for Airs, Javi Lapara. Oh, nice! <laughs> and so we did a one pager called Hard to Fathom. If you go to the In Symmetry Creations page, which is the umbrella company, uh, it's In Sim on Facebook, mm-hmm. In Sim Creations on Twitter. Uh, you've got Boot Hill, and you've got um, Hard to Fathom, and Relic, which is another yep. one pager she did. Those are all up there. If you want to have more information about um, the different titles outside of Airs mm-hmm. and alongside of Airs, that all that information is going to be on the Insum pages. Sounds good. And so we're going to go to break real quick, and at, at break we're going to listen to uh, Crossroads. And you guys will be back in just a few minutes. By the way, I replaced Jason's coffee with pickle juice. Bye, guys. <laughs>
So that was Heirs of Azildor, guys. Um, the, their album is available um, on their website, heirsofazildor.com, on iTunes, Spotify, all those kind of things. You can get it all through all those kind of things. So um, we'll link all of that stuff in the thing. What would you think, Jason? Uh, it sounded great. I definitely look forward to... Um to maybe meeting those guys and getting the artist in, and we can get and we can talk to him. Yeah. Um, so well, one of the things, Jason, he, he wasn't available for the interview because he was out of town when I recorded it. But um, we are. If you guys can do this for me, um, I want you guys to put hashtag two jerks moon pie because the artist loves moon pies. Really? And it would be an awesome way to find it, um, just for him. Um, he, oh, he, so he lives, um, uh, I have, I, I did the interview, you listened to it, but, um, the, down in Venezuela, or somewhere down in South America. South America, right. Um, and he can't get moon pies down there, and... It's one of those places that they don't have a postal service, so you have to do a federal, like FedEx or something like yeah. that. And to get moon pies down there was like a grand Jesus. to get moon pies down to him. So they haven't gotten moon pies down to him. So when he comes to the United States, that's what they're going to surprise him with. It's just, just a ton pies. of moon pies. I know. We sell them at the shop, too. So. Yep. So, um, so <clears throat> we're going to jump just right into all the stories that we like doing and give our take on it and all sorts of stuff. So, um, just here at the end, a uh, Japanese groom spends $18,000 to marry a hologram. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so was it that, okay, sorry. Um, was it that he had to pay for what like what what was the cost does they have so the cost was uh it's let me just read right here the, the tagline and this is one of the best taglines ever akihiko kondo yeah i was just reading that name too points out that he never has to worry about his virtual wife cheating or dying so i mean that's a positive outlook on your fake marriage <laughs> Um, but the $18,000 was for 40 guests to attend the ceremony, uh, dinner, the virtual creation, um, the ceremony, um, paid $2,800 for a floating hologram desktop device, um, and his wife's name is Hatsune Miku. Okay, Hatsune Miku. Hatsune Miko is an animated 16-year-old who, oh, God. yeah, 16-year-old with saucer eyes and lengthy aquamarine pigtails. And uh, it is, in the picture, they have him holding the doll version of her, which is very tiny. And, uh, uh, and very... She's a virtual reality singer named Hatsune Miku. I'm sorry, I, I, Japanese names have always been very difficult, so I apologize if we sound... Her new, her new name is Hatsune pedophile yeah i never cheated on her i've always been in love with miku-san he said using an honor and uh honorific that is honorific okay uh that is commonly employed in japan even by friends i've been thinking about her every day uh since march kondo has been living with uh a moving talking hologram of miko that floats in a twenty eight hundred dollar desktop device this is retarded so i understand that the japanese culture is very eccentric and different from what we are used to. This is retarded. This is people in Florida talking about this, and we're saying how crazy it is. Yeah. Um, uh, but we, <clears throat> our state coined the thing Florida Man, and we're calling this retarded. Uh, he said, looking at the blue. Okay, I'm in all. Uh, he, okay, so apparently, he's in love with every concept of her, but he married specifically the Miko of his house, which is the hologram. So. All the inanimate doll and all that other stuff. Jesus that's not Christ. that's not the version that he wanted. Um, stuff like this makes me uh, loved. I, I just want to reiterate the fact that um, 
mental health is a very scary thing in this world that we <laughs> do not we do not I'm trying I'm trying to laugh, but it's true. Mental health is something that is a uh, is not talked about often in this country, which is insane to me because we had a living clown pretty uh, kill himself, which is Robin Williams. Yeah. When Robin Williams killed himself and nobody batted an eye and literally didn't change depression overnight, then I knew we were we we're fucked. There's no hope for humanity. Yeah. Um, when Robin Williams kills himself, like yeah. I just want people to put that into perspective. Just yeah. think about that idea. Miss Doubtfire, right? Who Patch Adams? Patch Adams. <laughs> Miss Doubtfire, who at the very end of her of this movie tells you how to go on living when your family breaks apart. Right. It, which I've seen recently, and watching that movie as an adult... It's so sad. It's so fucking depressing. Especially yeah. as somebody that has gone through kind of what he is, minus the cross-dressing. Um, well... I, I knew right when I said that. Well, hold on. Hold as on, an old woman. Yeah. Uh, and as an old white woman. I'll give you the As an old white woman. Yeah. 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 Um, Jason does blackface and... Yeah. As, up. Right. And I'm not... And that's not, that's not racist. It's just I... I I'm a black woman. Yeah, he uh, identifies as a black woman. Yeah. Which is a whole nother subject. Argue with me. I dare you. I will go social justice warrior on this. Which is another thing about mental health that, that we could talk about, but we won't. Um, but back to this. So he considers himself an ordinary married man. Uh, he wakes up next to her every morning. Uh, she sends him off to his job as an administrator. Does he, have to, does he have to take her out of hibernate? He is a 35-year-old man, okay, who looks like he's 12. Um, she looks like she's six. Yeah, well, she's 16, so, and I guess in Japan, that's okay. You can legally marry a 16-year-old. Um, which I guess you can here, but you need parental consent, and if it's a hologram, I don't know how you get parental consent. And anyway. The uh, motherboard. <laughs> yeah, the motherboard, that's her. So, um, so, his mother refused to go because her son's a fucking nut job. Um, and he sleeps along the doll version of it. She bring. Great dishonor to our family. He married a fucking picture. Yeah, so <laughs> apparently he he carried around the doll version of her, which he puts the ring on. He keeps the ring on the doll. Jesus um, Christ. Uh, and then the virtual reality thing has a wedding ring. Uh, lies on a bed that he made, apparently. Um, so he's essentially married to a doll. Because yeah, he's, everything a, everything's done with this doll. Right, right. It's the it's so the did holly- he consummate this relationship with the doll? I don't know. Uh, I'm reading the story. Because if you're the- fucking a doll <laughs> and you're calling it love and it's marriage, I don't know. There's grounds for having you committed. I don't know. Have you seen some of those love dolls nowadays? Yeah, like, but wow, wow. like. They're creepy. It's the whole... Uh, yeah, but if you marry one... First off, <laughs> if you marry one, Sam's going to kick your fucking ass. That's true. Um, um, but but they're like the... Uh, oh, what's the what's the term? They're very uncanny valley. Like, they're super uncanny. The new dolls, yeah. they're so real that you're like, this is... Like, my brain can't process that this... Okay, you're a doll, but you look like a... It, they're fucked up. So you're the, you're the kind of person that falls in love with these things, is what you're saying? As a doll, yeah, no, God, no. They're okay. terrifying. Um, they're, they're, the more real you get, they... You get a little Chucky. The more throwbacks. real they make these dolls, the creepier I feel. I'm like, oh, and you yeah. See, speaking of these dolls, you, you see the robot that they're cr- tr- tramping around on all these things, the one that artificial... In, they say has artificial intelligence yeah, yeah. and all the other shit. Yeah. That's... Her expressions... I want to start carrying around a sawed-off shotgun. And if yeah. I see something that looks remotely like that, yeah. you could be a burn victim from Iraq. If you look like this <laughs> robot, I'm blowing your brains yeah. out. I, uh, it's going to make me start carrying around like some kind of EMP device in yeah. case these robots decide to just... And this is the podcast that they're going to rise up because <laughs> they're hearing all this shit. <laughs> yeah, our microphone's going to attack us. Yeah. Um, he says Gatebox is... Okay, and Gatebox, the company that produced the hologram, has issued a marriage certificate, so this is not even, like, legal. Like, it's there's no, like, legal grounds on this. Just respect. the fact that you're walking around telling people that you're married is the problem. I don't give a shit if it's legal. So they have wed beyond dimensions. Um, sir, uh, okay, the company, this is, this is the even more sad part. This company has issued more than 3,700 certificates for cross-dimension marriages. All right, I give up on life. So thirty, so almost four 
thousand other people have gone to just this one company you to remember, get marriage you, you remember when we had our little meeting and we talked about stuff we needed for the for the podcast and everything else, and I told you the extra long mic cables? Yeah. There's one reason. I'm going to tie it into a fucking noose <laughs> when I hear stories like this shit, and I'm going to hang myself. This is retarded. So, it talks about older women. He says a woman in a previous workplace bullied him in a nervous breakdown, and he became determined never to marry. So, a, and marriage is a really big thing in in their culture, apparently. So, in Japan, in the night in 1980, only one in cool fifth, find a fat chick. This is retarded, right? But in, <laughs> so, but it's 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 a high pressure thing. So, apparently, in 1980, one in 50 men have never married by the age of 50. That's it. One in 50 were not married by the age of 50. Um, so now that figure is one in four. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, that's a big jump. Yeah, 20 or 30 years, not yeah, even. Yeah, that's a huge jump. Yeah. So, but eventually he realized he'd been in love with her for more than a decade and decided to marry her. So he's been carrying around this doll or this character. Since she was six. Yeah, right. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, God. I didn't even think about that. Um, this character. It's not like Spongebob. No, we're not going to go with that. Yeah, we're, but it's still... But maybe where Spongebob's actually like 40 years old. Well, maybe the character was still 16 then. He just... She has not aged to 26 because he's like, ah, keep her at the prime age of 16, which is... Oh, my God. Fucking creepy. Um, he pointed you, out... Uh, uh, all he right. Pointed so out it's that not she, weird. Could you imagine fucking an 18-year-old now? Like we're in our thirties. Yeah, I'm thirty four years old. I don't I don't I don't hear, have any desire. Nope. I hear a nineteen year old or twenty year old girl talk and I'm just like, what is going on? Your not life saying, experience is that of is, a puppy. Yeah, and not saying that they're all like that, because like we just said, I don't want to get this whole fucking I don't I don't remember I'm the liberal in this group, so I I don't want to hear about how I don't respect women and blah 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 blah. But no when I you're respect women, but those are girls. Right. When you're a twenty year old, you're a fucking idiot. Male or female. The things that I did in my early twenties, I would never, ever, ever consider doing now because I Yes, they were yeah, fun and there was things you did and they were really stupid. Remember, but there's jail cells that had that in central Florida that says Josh was here, and I thought it was cool. Right, yeah, and you have stuff like that you would never do. And you're talking, uh, like, our buddy had a recent breakup, whatever, and I'm like, hey, buddy, you know, you're young. Girls will turn into women, and just like boys will turn into men, and you'll eventually find whoever you're going to be with. Uh, this is one of those things I that I didn't just, help him with that, by the way. Yeah, that was a... I told him he might, you know, you could be gay. and I thought he was. Yeah, so... <laughs> All right, he's not gay. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So, uh, but, uh, let me turn the gain down on there a little bit. I'm, I'm coming in kind of hot. Oh, yeah. The mic turned. I'm sorry, everybody. This is going to sound terrible, but I apologize. Is it better We're coming that in way? hot. Yeah, that's better. Okay. That's better. Um, yeah, they, uh, uh, I mean, I, if the guy's happy, I guess, you know, do your own thing. Uh, but that's, that's just insane. That's, yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't know how to. <laughs> I, I mean, he he said that the the his mom. You have three seconds to turn off this podcast. Three, two, right, one. Whatever you hear now, mom, this is your own fault. It just feels too goddamn good putting your dick in something <laughs> <laughs> alive. Yeah, I I don't. If you're gonna spend that kind of money, like we're just talking about, like an actual like doll, like just buy a love doll and just yeah. Because, I mean, you're carrying around a doll that you say you're married to, so people are going to look at you weird anyway. If you carry around, like, it's, your it's, love doll, they're going to, I mean... It's like these people, we have it here in the United States, but we're actually, with live things, where they're marrying their pets. Yeah. You've seen this shit where, like, the, I think it was the woman in West Virginia married her Pomeranian or some shit. Jesus Christ. And she had, she, she made this big stink about going up to Massachusetts because it was a female Pomeranian. And lesbian, and, and it's just oh god, yeah, it's just all this kind of <clears throat> stuff is just fucking retarded. It's it's yeah. It's like there's people that are like, oh, my animal is my kid. No, it's not. My kid is my kid. Yeah, I have a dog and a cat and children. Yeah, if there's a fire, which one are you saving? <laughs> right. Oh, there's plenty of people who be like my dog and like, oh, well, you should never had children then. 
Your uh, kids better be eighteen if you, you say that. To yeah, me. that's fucking. That, at eighteen, that's fend for yourself. It's a fire because I don't. I don't want to get burnt. Right, yeah. and you're really heavy at that point. My yeah. daughter's five, and she's heavy, and she's not a. She's not a overweight child. They're just. They and we heavy. learned from this last weekend. Your daughter can't take hot things. Right. She oh had a god. little bit of pepper on her chicken, and we had to listen to her cry for an hour. Oh my god, it was an hour. She just didn't know. What, she just didn't know what it was. Like she didn't know what the sensation was burning her mouth and yep. drinking everything she could under the sun, and it just wasn't working. And was it going to? It won't go away, Daddy. It all hit her at like once too. Uppa, she, Daddy. Yeah, Uppa. Yep, Uppa. Oh my god. But, and then my son's like, "Fuck no, I don't want any of that chicken." Yeah. And that, ah! and that boy would eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> broccoli, Josh. Broccoli, dude. Uh, this isn't broccoli, kid. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He loves broccoli. Yeah, I didn't get a taste for broccoli until my late twenties, and my son's like I got a little bit earlier than that. But I, I yeah, was mine not, was late. 20s. I was not two and three years old. No, like he's two years has. old, and he just fucking loves it. He lo- he loves fruits and vegetables, and he'll be just fine. He'll he's got a he's got a very cultured palate. Yeah, his mother wouldn't love to hear this, but that kid's gonna be a pussy magnet. <laughs> oh my god, he's gonna, Jesus. He's gonna slay that is so a, much tail. That is a beautiful boy, and uh, he's got flowing long blonde hair. Yeah, and it's it's you look at this kid and you go, God damn it, you won the gene lottery. He did. And looking at his dad, you'd be like, <laughs> Dude, you you won the lottery on those dollar <laughs> scratch offs. <laughs> no, you you're uh. You're yeah. not from good breeding stock. <laughs> this isn't the Kentucky Derby of fathers here. Nope, and uh, I got I I got lucky. My my one my 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 one good male kids, sperm got through, and he was all like, of your kids are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I got I have been very blessed with that. Uh, uh, so. <laughs> no, no thanks to me. Yeah, no uh, thanks to you. I, I helped make them, but not in the sense of their physical beauty. Yeah. I I am just here. So let's uh. Move a little bit. Move on from my ugliness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Michigan University professors oh, to no. fight off school shooters with hockey pucks? Question mark. An Oakland University police chief said a classroom full of puck throwing students would be quite the distraction to a shooter. That's fair. It would be a distraction until he shot the students because they're throwing pucks at him. Right. Unless they had an unlimited supply. Once that one puck's out of your hand. You're defenseless. Mm-hmm. And you better hope those pucks knock that man the fuck out. Oh, or, yeah. Or after that first puck is thrown, somebody needs to be charging the guy with the gun. Yeah. Um. So, the theory at o- uh, Oakland University in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Oakland University. I don't want to go to Oakland University. Oakland University in Auburn Hills. In Auburn Hills, Michigan. I'm so confused by yeah. that. I, I hear Oakland University, I think... Drive-by shootings. I think California, yeah, and right. big booty hoes. Yeah. And Auburn Hills, I think, just shitty place to live. Yeah. So, <laughs> Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> just cold. Yep. Dreary. Middle of nowhere. There's a big fucking lake somewhere. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, they're being trained to fight school shooters using, among all things, hockey pucks. Okay. Um, they're also being trained to throw their desks, chairs... Which that makes sense. If you don't have anything, you you fight for your life with whatever's there. Yeah, well, yeah, you got to defend yourself. You're gonna die, then you do whatever you can to survive. Yeah, uh, me, it would be a I'm returning fire, but this is Michigan. Probably, I'd probably get arrested at that point. Yeah, I'm not oh. sure how their gun laws are. It's capital. It's in liberal capital, USA. I'm getting, I'm getting lynched yeah, if I maybe. fire back. Um, so, the, the, um, sheriff's deputy tells that they're compact enough to be carried in backpacks, but are not considered weapons by law enforcement. Hockey pucks. So, you wouldn't get in trouble for carrying a weapon, but you could use it to assault a person with. Yeah. It. By this logic, just take a fucking brick. Yeah, by this logic, literally bring anything. Yeah. Like, scissors and stab the man with them exactly. <laughs> or or a rock or like he yeah. said a fucking brick yeah. you've been hit with a brick yeah go watch home alone 2 
Yeah. Watch the scene where Harry gets smacked in the face with a brick. Yeah. Or when they get hit with those, uh, the paint cans. Paint cans. They would not get up. Yeah. Like, when those, like, that movie, that movie's fucking brutal. Like, uh-huh. he definitely committed two homicides. Like, yeah. those guys were not, and if not, they had severe brain I love damage. the, I love the theory that, uh, Kevin McAllister is, is Jake ba- Saul. Yeah. Yeah. From the Saul movies, yeah, it makes so much perfect sense. Oh yeah, he's and he's a monster. At, and if you look at Macaulay Culkin nowadays, he could be Jigsaw. It's true. He looks like a drug addict fair blew up on the side of the road. But luckily, uh, I guess good for him though. He's clean now. He's doing better. He's got a podcast, and uh, he's doing he's doing a lot better. Macaulay um, Culkin, if you're listening to this, I loved your movies. Right. You had a moment there where you went insane. Right. But I still love you. You're an amazing actor. Yeah. The good son is fucking terrifying. Yeah, and your dad's an awful person. Yep. We should push him down some stairs if he's yep. alive. Yep. Throw paint cans at him. Or hockey pucks. Or hockey pucks. Yeah. yeah we'll we'll go with hockey beat pucks. him with a hockey puck. Because that's segue. not a dead... That's not a weapon. Great, great segue. <laughs> I that they have to specify. The yeah. police are like, hey, you want to know how to get, get past a crime? Well, if you carry a thing that's not considered a weapon... And, and you use beat the ever loving <laughs> tar out of somebody with it. Right. It's not an assault with a deadly weapon at that point. It's just assault. So you're not, you know, you're just beating them with a hockey True. puck. But I mean, in that also, same logic, I'm carrying around a claw hammer. Yeah. Or like, why don't you bring like the hockey stick so you can just beat them with a stick? Yeah, we're getting into that territory where people are going to start carrying around spears once again. Oh my god, like people it, carry around like hockey hockey sticks like Casey Jones. Yeah. <laughs> just just rem- imagine this is like ancient Macedonia where you had to, your caravan had two men with swords and shields out front. Oh my god. That's us going to the grocery store. That's what we years. need to go back to. because Sword and shields? Yes, because to me guns are for pussies. And if you own a gun, that's that's your prerogative. But swords and shields, I think... He looked right at me when he said pussies. I, I think they're for pussies. And it's not, not because like it's my stance on guns, but it's the... Like let's go back. Let's go back to real warfare. Let's go back to before it just became easy to be like, you know what? Well, I'm you know how I'm gonna kill this guy. I'm gonna sit like six miles from him and take the shot, or I'm gonna push a button and this this machine's gonna do it for me. I want. You, I dare you to say if Chris Kyle was alive, dare you to say to Chris Kyle that he was pussy. Oh, I will. It'd be like in and the episode. And then you get murdered. It'd be like in the episode of. Uh, oh, but he's dead now, so jokes on him. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it's like in the episode of uh, South Park. Nah, 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 can't get me. Yeah, you can't get me. Ha ha. Um, we love the troops. Don't. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, by all means, I'm not saying anything against we, the military for the love of fucking comedy God. is meant to push an envelope. Yeah, my and dad was we in the like military. pushing. Yeah, my dad was in the military for 20 fucking years. My brother was in the army. My grandfather was a fighter pilot in World War II. It has no. I don't. I have nothing against the troops. And I, you were a fuck up. I would. Uh, well, yeah. But my dad would never have let, let me go into the military. Not that he could stop me, but he just when I was going into the military. I've seen your dad. He could stop you. Oh yeah, he would beat the shit out of me. But it's also when I was eligible to go into the military, which I still am technically, uh, is right after nine eleven. So like nine eleven happened. Like I turned eighteen, and then oh shit, when did I turn eighteen? I don't even know. Um, but when I turned eighteen. On your 18th birthday. Right. <laughs> um, no, actually, I turned 18 in... On his 17th 02. birthday. 02. <laughs> 02. Yeah, so right after 9-11, yeah. I turned 18. So there's no way and in your birthday's hell. in... October. October. So yeah, so it was like a, a year. A year and one month after 9-11. Right. So yep. yeah, we were right in the middle <laughs> We were right there, yeah. My dad would... My brother... We're going to find... We're going to find weapons of terror. My, uh, my brother went into the military, and uh, my dad lost Which his mind. Moment? My second oldest brother Ryan, he went to the army, okay. and uh, and he and my dad lost his mind. He's like, "Are you fucking crazy? They're gonna send you over there," and which they did. Mm-hmm. He was a cavalry scout, right fucking there in the middle of it all. He was he was patrolling the streets. He told me about his convoy being stopped because there was by I can't remember what they called them, Mister or Sir, the the people in Afghanistan or whatever they called the military personnel. Uh, Assholes. Well, they call yeah, but they call him either like Mister or Sir. There's a very specific. They call him something like that, and uh, so they got stopped, and they're like, "Hey, like three cars up from your convoy, there's an IED under that car," gotcha. and they're like, "Oh, okay, well, well yeah. we should probably stop. Thank you for letting us know." <laughs> thank you. Yeah, most thank people you. just say drive on up. There. Yeah, most people be like, "Hey, that car over there's got cheeseburgers," and yeah. uh, 
And yeah, and he's told me some horrifying stories about being on the front lines. Because like I said, back, he made it back all fine and everything. Oh yeah, well he he has issues now, but I mean everybody does. He he had he he's he, getting the help he needs. Yes. Okay. Yes, he's and, a he's a fully functioning adult. He has a child. He's married. He's you know he's his back's cool. fucked up. His hearing's fucked up and everything. But I mean he's. Does he act like you? Oh no, we're total. We're okay. Then we can have him on. The <laughs> we're polar off. Oh no, he wouldn't say more than three words. Uh, he yeah, he's not. He's he's the the black sheep of the family. Not that we don't like him. It's just that like my whole family is very outgoing and personable, and he's not even close to that. He is like sounds like my kind of guy. Yeah, he say he would he would be on this podcast for no reason. It would be like. Uh, We'd have to make a video just so you could two see. Two jerks and a quiet guest. Yeah, it would have to be visual <laughs> just so you could see that we actually have a third person nice. with us. Um, so, so we're going to fight We're gonna fight the bad guys with hockey pucks. We're going to fight the bad guys with hockey pucks, man. Uh, now, now, okay, so what is the one thing that is not considered a weapon that you would carry day to day to protect yourself? That's not considered a weapon that I would carry day to day to protect myself. That if you read it in a newspaper story and someone, someone, the newspaper story is blank, man killed man with blank. Okay, so. And you're like sitting there going, how the fuck did he kill him with this? Or why hadn't I thought of that? Yeah. Okay. So obviously, you know, knives, pocket knives, all that shit's out. Okay. Oh. I got, I got mine. I got mine. Okay, that's not considered a weapon. Not considered a weapon. That it'd be unbelievably hard to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> like the person's begging for death after time because this is just taking so long. Like what's your what's your oh. go to? Oh God, I don't know. Mine's Oreo cookies. I'm a diabetes that bitch. I was thinking hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> My first thought was hot sauce. And just keep throwing it in their face. Dumping it because if you have if you have, as been documented, six stomach pussies like I do, yeah, it'll kill you. A hot sauce. That's why my daughter had that freak out because we uh, McLaughlin's do not handle spicy foods uh, yeah. very well. I'm not allowed to say stomach pussies in the same sentence with your daughter. So. Right, but she is she is uh, she's like me to where spicy. She's foods. a wuss when it comes to well, spice. yeah, and she's five, so she's never had spicy. Is what you're food. saying? I'm, right. I don't want to say those right. words, but when... she's also a five year old, so spicy foods. That's probably Our like the brand new. Thing that's probably it. the first time she's really had a spicy anything. Um, and it wasn't spicy. Yeah, was I see. I thought it had a kick, but that's because I just don't eat spicy foods. It was good, but if I could understand. You're from Florida, and you get Publix chicken. That's what we're reading. Right, it it's was so Publix good. fried chicken. It it's was so delicious. freaking good. It was delicious. Um, <laughs> you're gonna diabetes them to death. Yeah, I'm gonna diabetes them to death. Sugar and Oreo cookies. Oh my god! Then to the opposite of that, then I would just have a bunch of uh, I would have hypodermic needles and insulin, and then and then just give them too much. Just drain them. Just, just gonna give them too much insulin. Yeah, just. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want your body to produce too much of this stuff, which I have. Jesus which Christ. I have a few friends where I could get that supply from. They yeah. may die because they won't have their insulin anymore. Yeah. But uh, you know that's that's the price to pay for having diabetes. I'm sorry, I don't yep. know. What to so uh, sorry, Paul and Dale. Yep, yeah. sorry, Dale. <laughs> Dale actually, Dale actually wanted me to talk talk on this real quick. He was actually going to be on uh, this first one back from our little break, right? But we just decided we've got a quiet space. We're going to record real yep. quick. We're in our quiet space. That's right. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so the first time his mother listened to this podcast was when we were talking about the eggs and the ass. Oh, my God. And she shut it off. And she doesn't like me. <laughs> 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 she shut it off. She shut the podcast off. Which, if you go back and listen to one of our first podcasts, we talk about the uh, uh, British, oh, the was, British men yeah, that that, uh, that got like a baker's dozen or some shit. He got like a dozen uh, eggs, yeah, fifteen, yeah, in his asshole, and had to go to the hospital. Oh, right, uh, punctured the side of his colon. Yeah, and started oh my having god, that's right. And we we got onto a conversation with who of us could fit more eggs in their ass, 
and we all agreed that it was either Paul or Dale. Right, who were not in on the conversation. We're not so. here on the conversation. <laughs> we like hitting low-hanging fruit, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I was recently told by Dale that that's the episode that he listened to with his mother, and his mother shut it off, and she does not like, quote-unquote, those two talking about Ziggy and myself. <laughs> nice. So. That's awesome. Dale, let your mother listen to this one. Dale's a great person. He edits our videos magnificently. Um, I'm taking bets on 20 eggs, though. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. If he hard-boiled, he could get him up in there. Yeah, he could get him up in there. Dale, Dale's a competitive guy, too, so if he's going against somebody, he'll definitely... <laughs> <laughs> taking you on, I'm brother. taking you on. It's an egg of the ass championship oh, night. Oh, my God. But well, I think that's a good note to end on. I think so. <laughs> um, so, uh, what is your what is your uh, your thing of today's? What's your advice for today's listeners? Um, my advice is. Oh God, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, just. Just be appreciative of what you have. This time of year can be very good and bad for people. There's yeah. the, uh, I can't remember what the condition it, it, it is, but it, living in Connecticut for a long time, uh, the sun does not come out during the, the winter time. Cabin fever? Well, no, there's like a, it's called like SAD, Seasonal Effectiveness Disorder. So essentially what it okay. is, it gives you... It's the season, especially up north, it's pretty dreary. There's no sunlight. The clouds cover the sky because it's always snowing or it's got some sort of rain. It gets dark at 4.30, so you're generally, like, leaving for work when it's dark, getting home when it's dark. So it affects people's moods. The holidays don't help because some people don't have anybody to spend them with. Um, so just if you see somebody that looks like they're down or needs help or just anything, especially this time of year, just... Just saying hello or talking to them or yeah, literally just it's, it's, acknowledge their existence. Needed. I mean, people just, like, if you have an extra dollar, give it to somebody. Like, you know what I mean? You like, give it to the geek culture layoff. Right, the layaway, layaway payoff. <laughs> the layoff, yes. We're losing our jobs. We're laid off, guys. It's uh, Christmas time. You're yeah, pay you're just, paying my bills. It's Christmas time. You should always be good to people. But just, I've said it the last time we gave advice, just be, just be good. Yeah, um... So before that, I just want to say, um, before I give you guys my advice for the end of the show, I just want to say, go check out Heirs of Azildor on all social media, um, check out their YouTube page, check out all of, um, uh, heirsofazildor.com, buy their comic books, right. support those guys, right. you're not going to be disappointed, the comic book's amazing, um, they're on their eighth issue going on, they have 13, I think 13 or 11, one of the two planned, um, and then afterwards they're going to have a short one, and then they're releasing a trade paper. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely going to get the trade paper, because that's how I like reading my comic books. Um, but uh, support those guys. Make sure to go to the layaway payoff. We're going to help out some people um, less fortunate than all of us. If you can give, please give. If you can't, at least share, um, so that they can... Other people can find it. Um, but I'm going to leave you with my advice for today. And if you're going to marry something that is inanimate, make sure you're not also a pedophile in marrying a 16-year-old. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God. We'll be back next week with more of this crap and useless information. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube at Geek Culture. Boy, isn't that fucking appropriate.